Comrades, greetings from the Russian Labor Front and the Revolutionary Communist Youth Union. It is impossible to understand an armed conflict as it is without looking at its background. Let's start with two basic thoughts. First, the Donbas conflict, like other conflicts in former Soviet Union countries, resulted from the collapse of socialism and the USSR. Second, such conflicts have no a way out within the framework of capitalism. Just some moderation, a break, but not the everlasting peace based on the friendship of people. The United States, NATO and the European Union played their huge role in creating this conflict. So-called Maidans were organized by their eager activity. For a long time they have been turning Ukraine into what we see now. Specifically, they intentionally encouraged Nazism, nationalist sentiment and Nazi organizations. On the other hand, Russian capital also played its active role in making up the causes which led to that war. In fact, during the two thousands, Western and Russian capitals were dividing Ukraine. Russian oligarchs bought up en masse companies, ports, retailers, blackmailed Ukraine with gas supply. Hence, the common efforts have created this bleeding wound. Russian propaganda insists that the war was started to save the people of Donbas from never-ending shelling. But even eight years ago, Russia had many options to solve this problem quickly and in the most effective way. That year, of 2014, there was a powerful popular upsurge against Nazism in the east of Ukraine amid unstable Kyiv government. However, Russia not only failed to support this upsurge, but together with Ukraine and the West, imposed those Minsk agreement on the Donbas. The problem for the Russian bourgeoisie in 2014 was the fact that wrong people with wrong flags started fighting against fascism. The quick growth of socialism ideas and Soviet patriotism among the Donbas people, red flags and the rise of respectable pro-people field commanders, all this was dangerous for Moscow no less than for Kiev. The terms could get out of control and bring the people to power. That's why, instead of enlarging the anti-fascism struggle, Russia did everything to stifle it. They sealed the uncertain status of Donbass to use it as a tool to rein back Ukraine at the cost of continuing loss of life. So, the blame for the death in Donbass during eight years lies upon not only Ukrainian regime, but also upon Russia. Maybe now something has changed? If we needed to stop shelling of Donbass, it would be enough to quell those firing points in Ukraine. We could reply asymmetrically to every fact of shelling. But Russia followed own way. The fate of Donbass people is of no interest to anyone. They simply were used as an excuse. This war did not to stop shelling of Donbass, but intensified it instead. And official data proves it. The war is coming back to Donbass literally. Hiding behind the fate of Donbass people, Russia is pursuing own goals in Ukraine which have nothing to do with its public statesmen. One of those statesmen is the fight against Nazism which actually has never been started. But you can't beat Nazism without its cause, commercial competition, market, capitalism. And this is what Russia is not going to do. Moreover, there are plenty of Nazis in Russia itself. There are groups already similar to right sector, monuments and even museums to Hitler's allies. Many pro-Nazi proposals are getting support at the highest level. For example, in 2016 in St. Petersburg, a memorial plaque erected honoring Karl Mannergeim, the dictator of Finland, a Hitler ally and the one who actively took part in the siege of Leningrad. Vladimir Medinsky led the ceremony, at that time the Minister of Culture in Russia, and now a governmental official who is negotiating with Ukraine. 
Since 2007, a monument to General Krasnov stands in Rostov region, who voluntarily joined the Nazis during the Second World War. There are many such examples. Now Russia is the one who needs denazification, but authorities and oligarchs don't want it at all. That's why if Russian soldiers beat Ukrainian Nazism, it doesn't mean they bring the friendship of people. They bring so-called Russian world with Ukrainians dragged in by force. This will pave the way for a new war. We are completely convinced that this is the imperialistic war. Its causes are the worsening of contradictions between imperialist powers, competition for markets and resources between them and weaker Russia. The war is not for people's benefit. And we better note that both regimes, Russia and Ukraine, compete in anti-communism. Recall that Putin's promise to show Ukraine the real decommunization. The rulers of Russia and Ukraine share a common hatred for the Bolsheviks, for the Soviet Union. Today we see how Russian authorities use this war to solve domestic problems. They manage to pass the wartime hardship to the working people. Certain food prices have doubled already. Many of foreign medicine are no longer available in pharmacies. At the same time, repression grows. It is illegal to call the war with Ukraine a war. It is a criminal offense to unveil no war slogan. Providing information about the war contradicting official propaganda is in fact prohibited and punishable by law. Quite possibly the repression will reach both the left wing and the communist. We don't mean the official communist party which is blindly loyal to the government. Right now we have a few opportunities to work legally. The main point is this war won't solve the Donbas problem. Any outcome of this war won't prevent further bloodshed. It's impossible to solve the problem of Donbas as long as both countries are under the rule of capital.